Welcome to the Lifelinks Podcast, where we share stories of pushing past the stigma of diversity to embrace love of self and cultural identity, because we're not blending in. I'm your host, Consuelo Crosby, and also the creator of this content. If you want to chat more about what we talk about here on the show, please reach out to me on whatever platform you enjoy on social media. We're available at Lifelinks or on our website at thelinks.com. That's L-N-X-X. I'd love to engage with you more in these topics and hear more of what you have to say about them. Hola, chicas. Welcome to another episode of the Life Links podcast this Wednesday, the last Wednesday of August. Actually, it's the last day of August. Whew. Slamming into September. That means we've got a Labor Day weekend coming up, an extra day off. More time for you to listen to those Life Links episodes. Ah, oh, but I hope you're out in the sun. You're still having those summer days. We might be heading into a little bit of fall here. I feel like summer is stepping off the sweaty dance floor and taking a break at the table. And Autumn is just coming up and wrapping her cloak around her and saying, mm, You're done, honey. But that's okay. I've had enough sun. I'm getting a little cozy. I'm feeling so joyful from the powerful and soulful interviews this season. What do you think? Wow, right? Is this not joyful? These amazing women have just been sharing their stories and their journeys and all their joy and success and, oh, gratitude for everything they've been given to this day. I am refueled, I am refilled, I am ready to roll towards the end of the year. And I hope you are too. I hope you're feeling a sense of letting go. That there are other women figuring things out and wanting to share them with you. These interviews have really been so complex, so honest, that we needed some time to sit back and ponder and really think about what we heard. And so this season's being structured towards that, where we have one week of an interview, like last week with Alejandra Kreitz, and then the following week, like today, we're going to think about and discuss what was really being said there. It's like a book club. You read the book, and that's one thing. You're learning and you're enjoying the entertainment. But really, it's the book club, the camaraderie. Okay, a couple of glasses of wine, some food. But it's that opportunity to discuss what you've heard. To really sit back and go, huh. Think outside of what the actual person was telling you. And see how it affects you personally how it affects other people, gain new perspective, new appreciation. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, if you need to catch up on Alejandra's episode, you can find it on any of your favorite streaming platforms. And there's a new article on our website at thelinks.com. That's L-N-X-X. And you'll see this cute picture of her as a little chiquita con her uh, grandmother and her mother. I tell you, she comes from matriarchs. I have to say, though, Alejandra's exuberance was so contagious. I am so ready to move to New York. Talk about love of culture, persistence to overcome societal barriers. Did you catch that statement she said about dealing with that woman's comment in high school? Ugh, it's wicked. I had to edit out so much of my response. And she still took that leap of faith to find her place. Because with that leap of faith, she found her opportunity. And we talk about that a lot on this podcast, about following your soul, about turning off the brain and just saying, you know what? I'm sensing I'm supposed to be doing something else. I'm sensing I'm supposed to be somewhere else. And you just figure out how to get there. No job, no friends, no place to live. We heard this before in another episode even. 
that New York, it really draws you in. I love how Alejandra exclaims celebrating women's periods and life cycles from menarche, a girl's first period, all the way through menopause and beyond. And even more so, her compassion to reassure young girls in this really threatening time, this time that they're being denied access to the most basic yet brilliant of female experiences. But Alejandra and many other women like her are standing up and saying, no, we have your back. We want to provide what you need so you feel safe and cared for. So much hope to bolster strength and empowerment. And that's what I mean by bridging generations. It's not about passing the baton. We don't live linearly. We don't march in a line with blinders on. In any moment, yes, meet your needs, but also be thinking, hey, you know what? I'm okay here. I'm going to go over there. Do you want some help? Do you want some companionship? What do you need? We live a very spirograph life when we follow our soul because we're living in empathy and compassion and love for people that we don't even know. So I was thinking about how to frame this episode over what we've learned and thinking about my experience and the experiences of my daughters. And then I came to realize, and I think this is very powerful. This is how I get excited. When you consider what Alejandra is doing, when she is creating a camaraderie and a retail space for all of us. From a very young girl, I mean, I was 10. At that monarchy, I was 10. There is no reason for you to start having your periods at 10. All the way through menopause to end of life. That is six generations. Six generations right now of females and vagina owners who can unite and discuss what's happening for them and all within this space, this Sephora for vaginas. I don't know if we've been able to come together in a united mind over a universal topic and want to take care of each other. That we six generations can come together and have a conversation and have some laughter and share experiences. We have the young gen alphas, 10, 11, 12, 13, and maybe they're starting their first periods. And then beyond menopause to the silent generation, and they're still sassy. They are far from silent. Because when you consider that Angela Davis... Gloria Steinem, Rita Moreno, Jane Fonda. Okay, do I need to go on? When you consider these women, it's not even fitting to name their generation silent. Even the actual definition of the silent generation is totally off base. It says this generation is, and I quote, perceived to tend towards conformism or restraint in their outlook and behavior. (laughs) Not. (laughs) Thankfully, these powerhouses are here and they're ready to benefit from the collaboration between Alejandra and her co-founder, Savannah de Arazio. They're just breaking the societal and cultural taboos of women's vaginal care forever. Okay, forever does seem extreme, but think about it. Six generations standing united over the same life experience that is so intimate and embraces the majority of people that power is going to change things. Six generations 
Isn't it amazing to consider the power of that number all at once in like-mindedness? I don't think this has ever existed before. This can become the cornerstone for women to move forward in force because it tethers us together like no other life moment can. We are experiencing a different version of our communal identity all at the same time. No passing off the baton, no in-my-day sentiments, no okay boomers, uh uh-uh. We are all together on this one, chicas, and that feels so good. I really feel that in that same like-mindedness, we could blow apart the policies we have going now. Still, it is shocking to me that this major cultural taboo has been breached so suddenly. That taboo of talking about women's periods or vaginal care, that just did not happen. It is so long-standing, and globally, I think it's very much still in place. When I was a younger woman, that would have been hushed with a wave of the finger. Eyebrow up, like, what are you doing? It was talked about in whispers and behind closed doors and with this code. Nothing was ever talked about with actual terms, actual processes. We were never told truth. We were told these little, well, you know, and then kind of, and then, you know, okay, overdone. It's like, what? (laughs) We were winging it the entire time. My mother taught me to say, my little visitor was here. Okay, let me tell you, that little visitor outstayed its welcome way too much. But still, all that code, all that hush-hush, that wasn't for us. That was to protect the men from being embarrassed. And I say this because the difference between the all-male household I was raised in and the all-female household I raised, that difference is astronomical. And not just because of generational change and evolution, because honestly, I did a really crappy job at this. But that change was because it was taken out of the shadows of men's discomfort. We could operate in whatever fashion we felt comfortable in, empowered in, and it did not have to be edited. Thankfully, the young men today that I see are embracing this. They want to share this. They want to be part of it. They want to understand as much as the young women do. So think about all the men and women that can readily participate and have this conversation because of Casa de la Luna. And think about how the conversation can move forward, out of the shadows, into the open. Because as the public presence rises, so does the embrace of the most natural yet epic human process. And with that embrace, the barriers go down. This natural part of being human is no longer seen as debilitating or a reason to prohibit girls from going to school. Access to menstrual education will broaden to shatter the barriers that shame and negatively impact a young girl's self-esteem over it. Instead, she'll be empowered. She won't be held back. We'll have products that aren't squeezed in between condoms and baby diapers at the pharmacy and taxed as non-essential items. Non-essential? Are you freaking kidding me? Taxing period products is like taxing childbirth. But you actually get a tax deduction for a child. So, hey... Why not be getting a tax deduction for all the money we spend in a lifetime on products, pain relievers, 
our puffy pants, our hot pads, our pillows. Oh my Lord. We want our money back. We want our money back so we can invest it with Olga Espiritu, the epic financial planner founder we had on episode 52. Think about that. We get that tax money back. We invest it. We fund Casa de la Luna. I see a collaboration there. For the young girls reaching this epic stage, we support you and we are trying to reach out and provide care for you at this really difficult time. For all the women demanding free period products at your offices and school, we cheer you on. You go, ladies. And for women like Alejandra and Savannah, we celebrate you. And more importantly, we will fund you. It will happen. It will happen because we have six generations of girls and women and vagina owners demanding a more intimate experience, a more individual experience, and the love of being part of this community of amazing people. So if you want to catch up on what we were talking about here today, based on last week's episode, you can check out our social media at LifeLinks, that's L-N-X-X, for Alejandra's and Casa de la Luna's information, especially the We Fund investing site. It's listed in the show notes of the episode that you see on Apple or Spotify or, or any other listening platform, as well as the reel on our Instagram profile at LifeLinks. Let's get out and support Alejandra and Savannah. We have the numbers, we have the need, and if not us, then who? On next week's episode, our guest, Violet Canales, will share with us her cultural journey towards claiming her Latina identity. Oh, she brought me to tears with her passionate depth that was just going to tug at your heartstrings. She's so powerful. She's so loving. And she's talking about that journey that is the common thread running through all of Latinidad on the difficulty between the cultural thinking and the societal thinking. Again, the barriers. But this community is brilliantly large and embracing and compassionate. So there is a place to feel whole. So join us next week for Violet's story on being raised in the IE. I made the bad mistake of saying East LA. Woo! I know. I hear you screaming. I got corrected. Trust me, mujeres. I got corrected. So shout out to the Soul Cal ladies. Step into your truth. Ciao. Really appreciate the time you take to rate and review the podcast. Get the backstory and what you've heard here today and reach out to us at thelinks.com. That's L-N double X. Because it's about time, it's about us. Stay in the groove on our social media at LifeLinks and get ready to make your move, ladies. Viva!